Now, 21 months after the infected blood public inquiry was announced, the nationwide public hearings will begin next week. A national campaign to have a public inquiry was led by Sue Gorman from Ramsgate. Her husband, Steve Diamond, died at 62 last year from a suspected liver-related death after being infected with hepatitis C from infected NHS blood. Now, the Infected Blood Public Inquiry was established to determine how and why so many haemophiliacs uh, were treated with contaminated plasma products in the 1970s and 80s, resulting in victims being infected with HIV and or hepatitis C. Sue's been telling me her reaction to the fact that the inquiry is now happening. It's been a very long road, and so that affects how pleased I actually am. Yes, it's good that it's happening. Yes, it's good we've got a chair um, who seems determined to get the truth told at last. But it's very difficult to feel that um, pleased about it because it's taken so long Mm. and so many lives have been destroyed. Nearly 3,000 haemophiliacs have died and won't live to see even an explanation as to why. That goes to the heart of it, doesn't it? Whether or not the, the powers that be knew that they were putting these people at risk. I think they knew. I don't think they... I think it's possible to argue that they didn't know the consequences but the risk was certainly being alerted um, long before the infections, long before Factor Eight came onto the market. And the risk from um, anything based on blood plasma, particularly multiple um, contributions of blood, pl- blood plasma. Tell, tell us a bit about Steve. I mean, how, wh- when did it first become apparent that something had gone wrong? Well, Steve waited 21 years for a diagnosis. So... Really? Um, it became apparent he changed. Things started to happen. He became less um, acute mentally. Steve was Steve was very, very had a very very strong intellect. He was a very very clever man. And when I first knew him, he was sort of had genius written all over him. And he started making sort of dumb errors or sort of stupid confusions. And we didn't know what that was. And he didn't know what that was. And it used to irritate him because he had very, very high standards. So he used to irritate himself. And then his character changed. Uh, When I first met him, he was this sort of gentle, funny, hyper-intelligent guy. And over the years, over the 21 years we were waiting for diagnosis, he became short-tempered, aggressive, verbally aggressive, taciturn, all the things that are associated with the main symptoms of hepatitis C, which are fatigue, brain fog and depression. He was told in 1993, so that would be 16 years after the infection. He was infected in 76, we think. Yes. He was told that he'd, he'd been exposed to hepatitis C, but it wasn't serious. It wouldn't affect him. Right. And that was a diagnosis that many people got. So once... Steve knew that he, he had hepatitis C. What, what, what was the treatment like? Was it uh, um, just managing it? I mean, did he realise that it would probably kill him in the end? And it was oh, just... he, knew, he knew from the first diagnosis that premature death was going to be, it was one of the likely consequences. But there, there is no ongoing treatment for hepatitis C. There are treatments to eradicate it. But until 2015, the only treatment was interferon, which is the liver cancer drug, uh, joined with another anti- antiviral. Are you hoping that at the end of this uh, inquiry, you want, to, you want answers, I get that. Mm. Um, do you feel you should be compensated for financially for what you lost effectively? I, I think so. I mean, I, I, I think that there should be compensation for what people have lost. But my, when Steve was alive, I felt that very strongly. Um, because his ability to provide, as a husband, as a man, mm. as something very strong in his own family, um, bothered him a lot, lot more than it did me, but he felt diminished by it, and I don't think anybody had the right to take that away from him, because he worked very hard mm. for the career he had. Um, but since I lost Steve, the compensation was for him, not for me. And yes, I mean, I suppose I could view it as a form of the life insurance. He couldn't leave me. So that was the other thing. Um, because 
it was impossible to get life insurance at the critical period. And so, like most of the victims, Steve died without life insurance and left me dependent on what the state chooses to give me. It's now more about answers. Compensation won't bring him back. The compensation should have been his. And yes, obviously it will make a difference to my life. It's answers. It's blood money. Yeah. There's answers that we want, yeah. That's Sue Gorman from uh, Ramsgate, who's been leading the campaign to get that public uh, inquiry. And we should know, know more, I suppose, when it's finished.